Well, hello everybody, Christy Glass here of Christy Glass Knits. I have a bit of a different video for you today. This was an idea that I had heard from several of you showing interest in how I style my knits. And I went back into the archives and saw that I really worked hard to pull together outfits this whole time I've been Christy Glass Knits on Instagram and on YouTube. And for this, instead of a generic, let me tell you how I style my knits video, I thought I would pull you through the process of styling one knit in particular. And this knit is the Flutter and Fly Shawl. And I am recording this before I have even finished the Flutter and Fly Shawl, which is an important thing to note because often I am thinking about the styling of a knit well before it's even finished, sometimes even before I've cast it on. So today I am wearing a sweater that is not hand knit by me. This is actually a purchased sweater and I tend not to purchase sweaters anymore. I just won't do it. But this one was such a vibrant orange and I, it has this oversized feel and something I do lack in my hand knitting repertoire collection capsule is a good oversized cardigan. And so I thought, I saw this on sale and I thought, you know what, I'm going to pick this up and I think I'm going to do some woolly tattoos on this sweater. A woolly tattoo is just like some embroidery on top of a sweater. So that is why I am wearing it today because I gave myself that little out. Like it's okay if it's not hand knit as long as you do something hand work, some hand work to it. So that is what I'm wearing today. My background is also a store-bought afghan with gorgeous butterflies on it that I've been using, utilizing in the coverage of the Flutter and Fly shawl. When you're seeing this video, if there are still some Flutter and Fly kits for sale, I will link to them down below, but the chances are high that they're already sold out. So it's okay. You can probably still get some yarn from Asylum Fibers. You can get a pattern from Michelle Costa on her blog, stitchandhustle.com. I will link to all of it down below, but let's get to the styling. So this year for our shawl along flutter and fly the mascot is or was a butterfly and i chose monarch as my butterfly which obviously is orange and then there was a purple hair streak option and the blue adonis option i hope i'm saying that name right but basically purple blue and orange and i chose the orange i want to make sure there are some orange elements in my outfit now my background is in professional acting and professional modeling, as well as being a professional part of the crew on set for print modeling. Most of my experience has been in commercials, like live commercials or in commercial print. If you don't know what that is, it's like uh, commercials for diapers or baby products, laundry detergent, um, personal female hygiene, birth control, things like that. And print ads are anywhere from pharmaceuticals to like apple juice for, for kids, things like that. The past 10 years has found me on set as a baby wrangler more often than as a model. And a baby wrangler's job is to work with the photographer. I'm usually this close to the photographer and we're shooting babies and children in outfits or using products that are for babies and children. And my job is to get them to look at the camera and have an expression. Most of the time it's a smile. I do have some stories of ads in which a smile was not required. And those are, those are harder jobs. If you want to see a sad baby, that's sad. But, um, I've had a lot of experience working with stylists and things like that. So when you look in a magazine or at a commercial and you see one actor doing one thing, keep in mind that there's a whole group of people behind the scenes, making that actor look amazing, making that model look beautiful. So the other two jobs on a set that most interested me, I'm the baby wrangler or the model or the talent. And then there's the makeup artist and of course the stylist and the stylist has a wide variety of jobs that can be you have to, well, and I'm not a stylist, so I could be wrong about this, but from what I've observed is the stylist has to come up with the whole, all of the pieces of clothing for this actor or model, or sometimes the stylist is just making alterations or helping the alterations happen, or they're just dressing the child and making sure everything looks just so in the pictures. There's a lot of different roles a stylist plays. And as an actor, sometimes you have to try on many, many things ahead of the shoot day to make sure you look good and everything, everything fits. It's what they want. You, they take several Polaroids of you and make sure it's all 
done well. It reminds me of a masterclass that I was watching with Helen Mirren. And she talked about how she goes to set and looks at the clothes that the stylist has picked out for her and she tries them on and she rejects some things because they just don't go with the character. And I love that she has that power to do that. As an actor at my level, I don't really have that as much, although hopefully there would be some kind of input if something was really not working so well for an actor. I'm used to just put this on, this is what you're wearing. Anyway, so the stylists often overbuy. I mean, it's just very typical that there's tons of items on the rack. They pick out something for the actor or model, and unless it's a catalog and we're trying to sell a specific piece of clothing, then sometimes the director or the art director or even the photographer will say, can we add a hat? Can we change this out? What can we do? I'm not liking this look. So the stylist has to be ready with another look right there. And as an actor or a model, you are not allowed to take any tags off of your clothing. You're not allowed to do anything to it because the stylists usually return everything to the store. Unless, of course, they're damaged. There's, there's a whole other group of clothing that are samples that are usually damaged. So sometimes people are wearing clothes and on the back there's a huge cut in it or the word sample is written on it. One of my favorite moments on set was there was a man who was modeling a suit. He had this really sharp looking suit on. He was doing the whole pull, pull my collar and look casual sort of posing for an ad that I was working on. And he took off his coat and his shirt was cut here and here and it was safety pinned together. There was this huge gap because the shirt they had sent didn't fit him and so the stylist cut it and pulled the sleeve all the way down so it looked like it was a complete shirt. There's all kinds of tricks of the trade that happen, and of course that shirt would not be returned. So knowing that about my background, and then also knowing that I've had my makeup done many, many times, I've learned a lot about makeup over the years, and I love makeup so much. So knowing all of that about me, then maybe you'll understand why so much goes into these videos and these outfits that I put together, and it won't seem crazy. I hope it doesn't seem over the top or crazy. So right now, I'm working with this beautiful orange yarn. I would say I'm about halfway done with this project uh, as of this recording. So this is the gorgeous Monarch Flutter and Fly shawl that I'm working on. And you can see it's a very specific color of orange. And when I put this on, I want it to communicate. I want it to stand out. So there's a few different ways I can make this piece stand out. Before I get to the clothes, I want to talk a little bit about makeup. So I love wearing all different kinds of makeup. I like pushing the envelope a little bit with my makeup. I love bright lipstick and glitter on my eyes. And as I was coming into this orange styling, I thought, you know, I don't have a ton of orange makeup. So I happened to be on the Sephora website when they were having a sale and they had actually some really ridiculously good deals at the time of my shopping. So I ended up purchasing quite a few options to try out because Unless you're uh, there in person, you don't always know what you're gonna get. I believe that most cosmetics companies take returns. I usually only return something if it's defective somehow, so even though some of these options I purchased aren't going to work, I will still keep them. I could try to return them. I, I will return things that I've never opened, that I'm like, I absolutely know that's not gonna work. I don't know if they'll even resell those things, especially, um, it just seems like they wouldn't, but uh, I try not to be wasteful. But there is excess in this industry of styling things and film and television, there just is. So I was on a sale recently and a lot of orange items were on sale. So for example, I picked up this wild orange pigment stick. I think it's for eyes and um, I will just kind of experiment a little bit and see, you know, do I like this? Is it reading okay? It kind of can brighten up the eye a bit. I'm guessing this is gonna need a little bit of a smudge to really look good on the eyelid there. Ooh, I do like that. That looks nice. I'm gonna fill this in on this side too. And I'm looking for a cosmetic that's gonna pop and be a similar tone to the orange that I'm going to be wearing. And usually when I do my makeup, I'm going to choose to have either my eyes or my lips emphasize the color. Right now, I started off with, um, this was just for your information, this is a Kat Von D. It looks like it's called Wild Orange. 
and I cannot read the rest of the writing on the bottom of this, but it's like a pigment stick. This is also Kat Von D. This was five, Kat Von D. It was five dollars. It's called Rocker, and it's like a very glittery, not quite a gloss. It's more like a paint. Uh, I would say a lip stain. It's very glittery. So these two are working together well for me. I feel like neither of them are too bold or taking away from the other. I think it's a nice balance. But I purchased a couple other things that I want to experiment with when it comes down to the day that I'm going to put this look together. One is another Kat Von D. It's um, Metal Crush Gamma Ray. It's an extreme highlighter. I actually have this on right now. This part of my face kind of has an orange tone to it, you can see there. There's a few uh, others that I haven't tried yet. Uh, I have tried this one. This is the Glitter Flip lip gloss. As you can see, it's too pink. So it, it really does clash with the orange that I'm going for. And it's too pink, so that's not going to work. This, I don't want to open right now, but this is Paradise Found Chrome Paint Shadow Pot. This could work. Let's just open it, who cares? It's by Tarte. Oh wow. So this is like pure pigment, you can see right here. This, I can't even tilt it because it's basically like sand, but I can grab a little bit from the top here and I can see if I add it to what I already have on, it kind of adds a nice little shine there on my lid. And look, I'm just looking in a very small, small screen I don't have a mirror in front of me right now, so I'm hoping this is working out. And then I have a few other options that I can play with, so I can swatch these on my face or on my arm. This palette, I have a feeling that this one might work. This is the ABH Norvina collect collection, the Mini Pro Pigment Palette Volume 1. I have a feeling this one might work and this one might work, just based on the tone of the colors. And then this palette, is Sephora Holograph Face and Cheek Palette. So I'm interested in actually two different hues here. One is this one, but it might read a little too coral again. It's looking a little pink in this frame. And this one, which I think, I have a feeling this will warm my face up and give me kind of like a bronzer, maybe tan look, which would look really good with orange because it's kind of sunny. And then this is another eye palette that could be fun. It may throw a little too bronze, but I love the glitter. This is very, very shiny, and I think it would be worth playing around with. I also like to mix eyeshadows, so I might just have them all out and kind of do some experimenting with mixing them together. But right now, what I have ended up with, just those three products, like the two for the eye, the holographic highlight, and this lip, is really working for me to bring the orange to life for my face. Let's talk about styling the clothes. Because I'm dealing with orange, I decided to study the color wheel a little bit. And the nice thing about a color wheel is you can see, you can just Google color wheel and find one. And you can see, you pick out the color that is yours. And I'm not a color theorist and I'm gonna say something wrong. So please educate me in the comments if you know things about the color wheel because I really don't know much about it. But I do know that when you look at the color wheel, you can compare that color to other colors on the wheel and you can have a gut reaction to it or you can follow it exactly. So for me, the two things that I like to, to do the best are to pair a color with the color opposite the wheel and then also its neighbors, like side by side. And then I really like tone on tone as well. So for example, if I were to wear the sweater I have on right now with this shawl, that would be considered tone on tone. But I feel like the two oranges are fighting a little bit. I feel like this one has a bit more pink in it and this one has a bit more yellow maybe in it. And I feel like they're fighting and that this shawl is not popping. So as a photograph, maybe on Instagram, it would pop out because I'm wearing all solid orange but the shawl might not be highlighted. So my, I'm kind of after going for two different looks here. I do want someone to stop and go, whoa, look at this bright color I am seeing. Who's wearing it? Why is she wearing it? And do a little bit of a deep dive. But I also have a goal of having the shawl stand out. So my first impulse it was to go opposite of the color wheel. And I found this really wonderful dress that could be a great option to style my shawl with. The dress, 
has pops of orange tones in it. So there's kind of a coral here. You can see the coral right in here. And even yellow is kind of a neighbor, a very close neighbor to orange. And then there's also sort of a burnt, a burnt orange uh, brownish color kind of happening in here as well. So right here, you can see them together. There's the sort of coral flower and the burnt orange right there where my finger's kind of going back and forth. But the predominant color here is this awesome turquoise. And because the pattern has the different oranges in it, it pops off of the turquoise. It's a really wonderful marriage. As a bonus, there is a very bright streak of gold. It's shiny. It's not bright. It's a shiny streak of gold and there's this fringe happening. So this dress, all on its own, is quite a statement and I think it would draw the eye to it if you were scrolling on an Instagram feed. Now this shawl is not finished yet, but let's say we have the shawl. As you can see, there is, I am a little bit nervous that the tone of this shawl is not the right tone with these other colors. I am nervous about that because it is a little bit corally, pinky, and again, that burnt orange is a little bit in the brown family, so you can see next to it, maybe it's not quite right. But if I stand way back, and I'm wearing this awesome turquoise dress, and I have this orange shawl, it might pop. But I won't know until I try it on. But this was my initial instinct, was to pair it with this guy, this girl. So that's kind of going on the opposite of the color wheel approach. Another approach that I think I'm going to like for this shawl is to go tone on tone. What's tricky about that is finding the right orange and there is a, it's hard with shopping online especially. I don't like to shop in person. It takes too much time. I don't love returning on person. I've always been kind of, since the age of the internet and since city living, I've just been really into ordering clothes and then returning them. So I have ordered a bunch of different orange options from ASOS, which is one of my favorite companies to use. And I've taken a photo of the ball of yarn sitting on top of each um, item of clothing. And you can kind of see is it the right orange? So there's a few factors going on here. I have not tried any of these things on. So one thing I like to do is to try on the clothes and see, are these clothes even flattering on me? And when I say flattering, I mean, does it make me feel beautiful? And does it highlight parts of my body that I want to be highlighted? For example, I really enjoy clothes that are um, thin on the waist and fuller on the bottom. So. The question is, do I feel great when I'm wearing this piece of clothing? And I haven't tried any of these on yet, so I can't answer that. So this is just you and me discovering what has arrived in the mail and do I think it will work with this shawl. First up, I wanna go with the crazy option, which is this really special, fun sequins romper. It's like a jumpsuit. So this is a romper and it's super sparkly and I love that about it. And it's orange. And so I'm going to hold up my yarn next to it and see, is it the same tone? And I, I think it is. I think this actually really, really works. I'm a little bit nervous about how the light will play off of it. Will it read in a photo? Will it be as amazing as I hope that it is? So if I were to have the finished shawl here, as I hold this up with the, with the sequins, what I'm feeling is Maybe wool and sequins isn't the right combination. Maybe this will just look totally ridiculous. So I'm going to have to try it on and decide. What I do think it has going for it is I think the piece itself is really fun and I think the tone is the right tone. Next up I have this blazer. And this, I guess I could try this on, but this is sort of an unconventional, it's, is this called double breasted when it has the, is this, the, does that mean it's double breasted? So it's an unconventional plaid because it's quite orange. It also has some masculine features to it, which I like. It's a bit oversized. And so this I'm wondering if I need like a sassy heel to go with it, like a skinny jean, a sassy orange heel to go with this mask to sort of 
play off of the masculinity of the blazer. I think this also could be the right tone. And I think the plaid actually pairs really well with a wool shawl. I also like that it has this brown in it and that could pick up on the contrast yarn that's in this shawl. So this could be fun too. Another thing that's going for this blazer is it isn't solid orange. So pattern on pattern kind of plays better than solid on solid because the wool, the texture of the shawl, the wool will pop off of this plaid, I hope. So initially I'm thinking this could be a winner, but often what I think is gonna be a winner ends up not being a winner. <laughs> I'm getting a bit warm in my orange sweater, so I'm gonna take it off now. Just kind of like Mr. Rogers on the opposite. This I'm nervous about because this orange reminds me of that one crayon in the Crayola box. I think it was called Yellow Orange. It's, it's looking a little yellow to me, but I'm wondering if kind of like a paint chip, it will play as sort of the lighter color of the orange. I like that the straps are long, so I could even wear it with this t-shirt, which I kind of love the idea of featuring this t-shirt with these straps and then throwing this on over it. So I didn't even think of that, but I could really style this shawl nice and tight around my neck. And that could be a really stunning little outfit with some very basic sneakers. I wouldn't have to have anything orange on my feet. I think just a basic sneaker could be cute. So initially I wasn't thinking I'd like this, but I sort of like this tone on tone situation and love featuring the butterfly in my t-shirt. So sometimes my first gut reactions aren't right. And then I make a discovery by trying something on. So this I think is also a contender. And I am wondering how this would look with all of those things I just mentioned, plus the blazer. Who knows? I honestly don't know the answer. I am discovering this with you at the same time. This dress is cute because this is definitely my silhouette. It's got some volume right here in the neck, which is important for someone who has a very small bust like me. And I love polka dots. And then it comes in, it cinches here in the waist, which is the part of my body that I like to focus on the most when I'm dressing myself. And then it has a full skirt. So, I love the silhouette of this dress. I feel like this piece is the most me. It's the most Christy, which is a really important thing to think about when you're dressing yourself. However, I am doing this as part of my business, so I like to push the envelope when I am dressing as a character, which is Christy Glassnitz is my character and Christy Glass is me. However, I am nervous that this is the wrong tone of orange. This seems more like a red orange to me. And when I pull this up, and place it on, I think it makes my eyes hurt. I think that these two pieces are not serving each other. So I'm probably not even going to try this dress on. I'm just gonna return it. Here's another dress. And this dress, I'm gonna have to try this one on because I don't know if this dress is just a little bit too boring for what I'm going for. It seems cute. It seems like it has a nice cut to it. I think this is called a bodycon cut, so it might be just very form-fitting, which is always a risk for me because I'm kind of a pear shape. I know I, I'm a thinner woman, but I'm also a pear shape, so sometimes this cut does not look good on me. So I will try this on just to see if it's any good, but before I do, I am going to double check the tone again because if this tone is too clashing, See, I think that might just be slightly off enough that it's not gonna look good. But it is closer than the other dress, so I may try it on just to be sure. This last dress seems right on with the color that I'm going for, and I think it's really gonna pop. And I love the idea of this little waistband here, so I think this ties in the back. So it starts in the front, ties in the back, and it seems like a very long waistband. So I might even be able to play with bringing it back to the front and doing a little bow of some sort. But this color really seems right on par with the skein of yarn, more so than the other two. It is slightly off, but I, I am going to try this one on as well. I think what I've learned by going through all of these items is 
that plaid is kind of really talking to me right now. Like it's so not a piece of clothing that I would ever purchase, but it kind of seems like it might be the best one to serve this shawl. And I also love the idea of trying that turquoise dress, even though the orange is slightly different than what I was wanting it to be. Thank you so much for joining me here for part one of my Flutter and Fly shawl styling video. I will let you know when part two is out and I will link to it down below once it is out. If you're seeing this on the first day this video has aired, it won't be ready yet, but it will be coming shortly and you can see how it all ends up. Thank you so much as always for joining me here on Christy Glass Knits and I'll see you next time. Bye.